Hey y'all, come on in. It's poor setting Sunday. It's another day and another chance to sparkle. So keep a sparkle in your eye and a sparkle in your heart because it makes you beautiful. Let me show you the mountains. They are all greened up, ladies. All greened up. Aren't they just gorgeous? Just gorgeous. Well, I see the wind got to the flag. Just gorgeous. Okay. How's everybody been this week? I'm sorry I didn't get to come and see you all on Tuesday or Thursday because, or Friday, because my husband's sister passed away. Last Sunday when I got off the phone, or got off, um, off here, no sooner than I got it uploaded, uh, to YouTube, um, the phone rang, and it was, um, the sister-in-law from Ohio, and she was calling to let us know that Rainy's sister had passed away, and I was heartbroken, and Rainy was heartbroken. He just took it very, very hard, and, uh, so y'all keep him in your prayers. He still can't um, come to terms with it because her daughter didn't have her um, a funeral, uh, memorial service, or anything. So there was no goodbyes, no fi finalities, or, you know, it, it, nothing. He said it's just nothing. He didn't get to say goodbye. He just, he's having a very hard time with it. So y'all keep them in your prayers. You know, death is a hard thing to deal with, and it seems like we've had our share of this year because he's lost um, a sister, a brother, a niece, and a sister-in-law all this year so far. So, but anyway, I wanted to come in. Uh, you, like I said, y'all keep him in your prayers, but I wanted to come in and tell y'all a story about when I was a little girl. Um, I was probably, my earliest memory is around two, three years old, and I can remember back that far, uh, because I loved my daddy, and he was just special to me, and every time him and mom would get into a fight, we lived uh, next door to my grandparents, and um, every time that they would get into a fight, mom would run dad off. Well, I would cry and tell him that he couldn't go without me, so he would take me. And it is cold out here today. He would take me with him. And back then, you know, back in the 50s, they had these great big honking cars, and they had these great big back seats. So Dad always slept in the back of the car, and he always slept up on the, you know, the back seat, and he would make me a little place down in the floor and uh, I was so little that I could stand up in the back of the car in the and look out the window I'd be like this you know looking out the window but I would wake up sometimes and I know nobody believes me but it's the truth I'm telling the truth um, I would wake up sometimes in the middle of the night dad would be sleeping and I'd be scared to death but I'd be frozen like this with my little hands on the door like this where the windows are and I'd be just watching, watching, you know, scared to death. But I would watch, look out the window and there'd be these little people. They were, they must have been aliens, but they looked like little tiny people. But they didn't have regular faces like people. But they were little, and they were getting samples of the building, and samples of the of the grass, and samples of everything around us. They was getting samples of, and so I would just sit there and watch and watch and watch, and that's what my earliest memories are of. I never seen a UFO. I never seen them land. I never seen them leave. I never seen them come. I just knew that I had woke up, and there they were, all over. Um, and there was probably about six of them together, you know, not in a huddle, but they were all over taking samples of everything. So, 
anyway, uh, so I would let, I never said anything, because I was a little girl, you know, I didn't know to tell anybody, and I never said anything until later years, and then, um, Dad was a drinker, so, uh, when I did say something, they said I must have got a buzz off of Dad's alcohol, and no, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't drink any of Dad's alcohol, the only thing he let me drink, uh, and then he didn't let me, I would always get into it, is when he would tell me, go get Dad a beer, go get Daddy a beer, I would drink some of it on my way to get him, or to take it to him, and he never knew I did that, but it's a wonder I didn't become an alcoholic, because I'd done it forever, forever, but Dad was an alcoholic, and he drank, um, he drank, uh, Jack Daniel's whiskey. But anyway, uh, then later on, um, it, when we had moved to another house, um, and this was down by the railroad tracks in, in the town where I was raised, and, um, there was always seemed like something come in mine and my sister's room, and I would just lay there, you know, and watch it uh, move around in our room. And I never could see its face, though. And I never could tell what it was. So, I just, those were early memories I had, and I never told anyone about anything coming in the room, but I do know that after my oldest brother passed away, I was seven years old. And that broke my heart when he died. I was so close to him and only got to see him in the summer. He didn't live with us. He was 17 when he was killed. And he was delivering newspaper. He lived in Pikeville, Kentucky, or Paintsville, Kentucky. And he delivered newspapers around in the town. And an 80-year-old woman ran up on the sidewalk and hit him and knocked him into a brick wall there. And he went home and, or he, they actually picked him up by ambulance and took him to the hospital. And his grandmother that he lived with, mom didn't raise her first three kids. His grandmother that he lived with <coughs> went to the hospital and they said he just had a bump on his head, take him home and give him some aspirin. Well, you know, back then, you wasn't supposed to give, back then they didn't know you wasn't supposed to give kids aspirin. And she gave him aspirins, and he took two aspirin, went to bed. He, he took the aspirin with a Coke. And he went to bed, and he didn't wake up the next morning. And that just broke my little heart. I was seven broke my little heart, and I knew that I would never get to see him again, and so, we, uh, when we went home from the funeral, I was so heartbroken, and I was thinking, I'm never going to see my brother again, and when we got home, and I started at the steps to where we lived, he was standing at the top of the steps, and it was almost like he was there to comfort me. At first, I was a taken back, you know, I went, you know, seeing my brother at the top of the stairs, knowing that I'd just seen him a few days before that, laying in a casket, white as a ghost. And it was like he was letting me know that, you know, you, you're not going to see me here, but you'll see me again. And so, I'm just telling you all things that I've experienced in my lifetime, and in, in my 65 years. I remember even laying in a crib, and I remember um, a lot of things about that crib. It wasn't a happy place for me to be. I don't think Mom had a crib for me, but I had a crib at my grandma and grandpa's. Uh, I don't really call him grandpa. I call him my, my grandma's husband. Uh, because he was not a good man. But anyway, um, I just wanted to share those memories with you. Um, and I think they're, they're, they're fond memories. 
because I look back on him and I've spent a lot of time with my dad. And he's the one that I got my work ethics from, my, my truthfulness from, um, because he always told me the truth was the, always the way to go, you know. He, he may not have always told the truth, and Dad was not a mean drunk. I mean, he, I didn't consider him as a drunk. He was an alcoholic, but to say he was a drunk, he was not a drunk because he worked three jobs sometimes at one time. Um, he would work, he worked all the time. Um, the only time I got to spend time with him is on Sunday. He would take us all fishing. We'd go fishing and he, when we first went, I always remembered him uh, telling us, if you're going to fish, you're going to bait your own hook. And those little squiggly wiggly worms, you know, I would scream a little bit and he'd say, oh, it's just a worm. And, you know, I'm scared to death of snakes. But I would get that little wiggly worm and I'd, oh, and scream like a little girl. And he'd say, well, don't look like Susie's fishing. Well, he called me Susie Q. Don't look like Susie Q's fishing today. All the other kids would be fishing, you know, my older brothers and sisters would already be fishing, but I would still be trying to bait my hook. And Dad said, now watch, I'm going to do it one time for you, and then after that you're doing it on your own, and if you don't, you're not fishing. So that's why I can bait a hook. I can run a trot line. No, I can't run a trot Well, I can run a trot line because my husband, I have to tell you that story too. My husband took me on a trot line run one time. Oh, my God. I just knew he was going to kill me, but that's for another day. So we'll leave it right there at that. And I hope you all have had a wonderful, wonderful week. I hope your next week coming up is wonderful. I plan on Tuesday putting up a video um, about some new things that I bought and trying and um, bought them to try and let y'all know about them. Um, a couple things, some Laura Geller. Uh, I don't think it'll be here by Tuesday. Maybe, maybe not. But I don't think it will be. But um, I'll, I'll um, if it is, I'll, I'll put it in my video. Uh, but I hope y'all have a wonderful week. If you haven't already, and by the way, my name is Susie. My daddy called me Susie Q. Hence the channel name Susie Q. And my last name is Blankenship. So Susie Q B. And I uh, want to welcome all of my old subscribers, welcome my new subscribers, and hope that if you haven't subscribed, you'll become a part of the Suzy Q family and become one of my Curly Qs. So, y'all, I hope, I hope to see you again. I hope you've subscribed. I hope that you'll watch a video or you'll watch commercials. No, I don't have... I'm not monetized anymore, so there's no commercials. But anyway, it's nay that. So, I love you guys so much. You'll never know how much I love you. That, that I look forward to coming every week and getting to tell you a story about my life. I look forward to getting to come and talk to you. I don't, I can't even remember if I answered comments last Sunday. If I didn't, I am so sorry. It was just, it seemed like just everything happened at once and it got so uh, just everybody tore up in this house because we were all close to to my sister-in-law Darlene Lux and my my kids my boys was just so close to Aunt Darlene and they loved her so much so I'm sorry I'm becoming a crybaby I don't know why uh, I mean um, I thought I cried out, but you all just keep us in your prayers, and I want to leave you on a happy note, so I'll see you on Tuesday if nothing happens and the creek don't rise. We've had rain here, and that's why it's chilly. The, the old-timers call this a blackberry freeze. We've only had one day of really, really warm weather, and the rest of the time it's been chilly, chilly, chilly. So we better get some good, juicy blackberries this year. And if we do, I'll teach you all how to make blackberry cobbler the hillbilly way, the easy way. 
So I hope y'all have it. I'm, I've said that already. I hope y'all have a good week. And I really do hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope you'll come back and see me. And I hope you'll have the best Sunday ever. I hope you've had the best Sunday ever. I love you guys. Don't ever forget that I love you. But God loves you more. Bye.